hi everyone i hope you all are doing good so in my today's session uh, i'm going to explain about uh, error scenario in asp.net core web api applications okay so what is this error this error is related with the transient failure of your connections uh, with the uh, azure sql databases it may happen on a sql server uh, installed on a lan also but the possibility of having this issue on a local LAN network is very less compared to this Azure databases okay so what is the error message an exception has been raised that is likely due to a transient failure if you are connecting to a SQL Azure database consider using a SQL execution strategy or SQL Azure execution strategy okay now what is the reason for this error Applications connecting to a database server have always been vulnerable to connection breaks due to backend failures and a network instability. However, in a LAN based environment working against dedicated database servers, these errors are rare enough that extra logic to handle those failures is not often required. But with the rise of cloud based database servers such as Windows, Azure, SQL database and connections over less reliable networks, it is now more common for connection breaks to occur. This could be due to defensive techniques that cloud databases use to ensure fairness of service such as connection throttling or to instability in the network causing intermittent timeouts and other transient errors. When connecting to a SQL database, you have to account for transient connection failures. These connection failures can happen, for example, when updates are rolled out, hardware fails, etc. The error you see indicates that one of these things happened which is why your connection was dropped. Enabling an execution strategy will help in getting rid of this error scenario. Okay. So basically connection resiliency refers to the ability for entity framework to automatically retry any commands that fail due to these connection breaks. So what is the solution guys? Solution is very simple. There are two places where you can put this uh, solution basically or this retry mechanism I can say first one the execution strategy can be configured in the on configuring method of your derived DB context object okay so if you are deriving from your uh, database context uh, class okay you are creating your own DB context object so in on configuring method of your DB context simply put a method call basically so using the options builder which is a db context options builder uh, supplied to your on configuring method call the use sql server supply the connection string which you usually provide okay this part we usually configure but in order to enable a retry mechanism you have to introduce a second parameter which is like this put a comma and pass a lambda expression like builder gives builder dot enable retry on failure max retry counts that exp that I have explained here the max retry counts means the number of retry attempts need to be done in order to retry the failed database commands to execute once again or in order to establish the connection once again basically okay the number of times you want to retry and then comes second parameter the time span or from seconds how for how many seconds or how many seconds delay you would like to introduce between these retries okay so you can uh, specify the seconds also basically which will be the delay between uh, subsequent attempts okay third is the parameter in order to put uh, simply you can pass a list of integers or strings it seems okay where uh, this method will automatically put the error numbers if there are any errors during retries I don't I, I actually uh, don't wanted that uh, that's why I have put a null there okay so this is the one place uh, uh, I think this scenario is best suited for uh, thick client applications like WPF applications or Windows services uh, background services you write where you can configure in on configuring method of DB context object but for uh, web APIs you need to configure in startup.cs okay so in the configure services method of your startup.cs using the services collection what you have to do is when you configure your db context okay so usually you add your db context by calling add db context or scope db context uh, like methods okay so simply options gives options or use sql server put the connection string of your database okay and then 
second parameter you just introduce this lambda okay so builder dot enable retry on failure max retry counts time span from millisecond from seconds you specify the seconds and third parameter you can pass it as that okay so basically once this has been put this has been implemented usually you won't see this error okay this error will vanish because basically whenever a transient failure happens on your connection object your entity framework will automatically retry to establish the connection once again and run the commands which were failed okay so this by this way you can get rid of this error basically okay so there are some things to consider when you enable uh, retry mechanisms first of all enabling retry on failures causes entity framework to internally buffer the result sets which is the default behavior of entity framework also which may significantly increase memory requirements for queries returning large result sets okay because see you were trying something connection failed result was buffered again you will start retrying retrying okay in the second or third retry again you were able to establish the connection but due to the huge result sets again some connection dropout happened but again that result set was buffered so there is a chance that your uh, result sets will be buffered okay and uh, which may increase uh, uh, basically memory requirements okay that is the one thing uh, we need to take care and i think this error will be reproducible in a very rare scenario this happens very rare guys it won't happen often okay it will be very rare so i think we can go with this trade off this shouldn't cause any problem okay this will be a minimal impact for us streaming is not supported when retrying execution strategy is registered see entity framework returns data in two ways buffering and streaming the default behavior is buffering which we saw here the another approach is streaming that's what they have explained here okay so streaming is not supported when a retrying execution strategy is registered this limit limitation exists because the connection could drop part way through the results being returned okay while streaming itself the connection could have dropped and you have returned only half of your data okay when this occurs ef needs to rerun the entire query but has no reliable way of knowing which results have already been returned data may have changed since the initial query was sent the results may come back in different order results may not have a unique identifier so there are many challenges okay so with retry mechanism streaming is not supported okay but still if you want to make use of you you can explicitly make use of the as streaming method on your lnq query you have constructed against your entity framework or entity you can say Okay, so that is one uh, trade-off. Streaming is not supported, but you can explicitly use it. Okay, user-initiated transactions are not supported. Okay, do remember, there are some kind of uh, transactions which Entity Framework will automatically create for you. For example, whenever you are updating your entities, okay, whenever you update your entities, Entity Framework will automatically create a transaction for you inside the block uh, which you have used using the using construct. Okay. So there is no need to create any explicit uh, transactions because entity framework will automatically create for you when you update your entities. Okay, but the moment you introduce user uh, tra uh, user transactions, basically where you explicitly mention some transactions or ambient transactions, like one transaction containing multiple uh, save DB changes async calls. Okay, so basically you are uh, adding one record okay you are calling uh, save uh, changes okay and then again you are updating a record you are calling save changes again you are deleting some record and you are calling save changes so this kind of user initiated transactions are not supported okay so because entity framework what happens you know in case of retry mechanism entity framework won't get at what part it basically failed during which operation of your transaction it got failed okay that's why uh, this kind of user initiated transactions are not supported, but still if you want you can create uh, You can create an execution strategy in order to support user transactions So that's why I have mentioned you need to create the execution strategy strategy manually by using the following thing simply create your DB context object or uh, resolve your DB context object and then Immediately instead of immediately executing your user transaction You have to first extract a strategy by calling this method on DB that is your database context dot database dot create execution strategy 
on this strategy you can basically call the execute method and pass your user transaction okay so using this yes you can support the user initiated transactions also so whenever failure happens whenever transient failure happens basically it will treat your entire block once again as a new state okay it will treat your entire block of instructions as fresh set of instructions and it will try to execute them okay there are some other challenges associated with this okay when uh, the retry the transient error occurs when retrying also that i'm going to explain in my next video so that's it for the day i hope you understood how we can get rid of this error okay the transient failure related error thank you for listening and have a nice day